Um, so, uh, as, I, as Francesco said, I am a postdoctoral researcher in FPH AI Center, and I'm 50% also at Google Brain, and now is Google DeepMind. We are a bit confused about it. Uh, but so, uh, yesterday, I think that you had like a, a nice introduction on reinforcement learning. So today we will go a little bit like beyond that to go to deep reinforcement learning and why we are interested like in this, in like studying this thing, because in the last years, I think most of you heard about like the very successful and amazing results that DeepRL uh, achieved. So, sorry, I'm not super comfortable with this, but okay. The first one that now is, 10 years ago, incredible, um, is by, uh, the first result like, was by DeepMind using like DQN and why like it was interesting because it was the first like uh, machine learning algorithm that solves different uh, games that are these Atari games that you can see also like, uh, for example, Space Invaders and so on. And this was one of the like ground through ground groundbreaking results of reinforcement learning, one of the first one. But very few late uh, years later, they were like also very like interesting results on using this kind of algorithms also for um, robot locomotion. This is like our Mujoko uh, environment. And like for Brackley, we try like to propose this new algorithm that we will see later called trust region policy optimization. And let this show that this kind of reinforcement learning algorithm can solve also these kind of problems. After that, also this like was very like famous news that maybe also your parents heard about it. That a reinforcement learning algorithm uh, mastered the game of Go. So it won against the world champions of Go. And this was like was very interesting because like before what what they do is that they show that the uh, reinforcement learning can beat uh, humans in chess, but Go is very like high, uh, was more complex than chess. And for example, I had also like a meeting like some days ago and also we have some like lawyers and also they asked me, huh, you do reinforcement learning, huh? Cool. So you can know how to play how to play Go. So basically, everyone really knows about this kind of news, and was very important for like for much the machine learning community in general, not only for reinforcement learning. After that, was proposed by DeepMind also um, A3Cs, so uh, advantage act of Kittrick, and they show like the performances on a, a car driving simulator called Torx. Then uh, another important result was achieved by OpenAI proposing proximal policy optimization, uh, where they show that they can like win also uh, in uh, um, also on Dota, that are like very like high complex uh, uh, video games. Then uh, was proposed software to critic, where they show that they can like learn the robot can learn how to uh, walk and how to uh, uh, work in the, like all about in also in like in complex environments. And then like the, in 2019, so we are going closer to our years, uh, DeepMind proposes another uh, algorithm that is like uh, also like similar in spirits on AlphaGo and that show that they can um, beat like also StarCraft. So then, like another interesting like result that also I think that most of you already saw this video. Um, uh, OpenAI showed that the uh, manually, so like here there are like many things that are involved that are complex because you have like to understand how to man like how to manage the the hand, but also how to solve the Rubik's cube. So this is like uh, this problem is highly complex, and. After that, okay, um, DeepMind also proposes like this new algorithm, mu zero, that the main differences between this one and the and the, uh, uh, the other ones that we have seen before was that basically before we have also, if we are going like a little bit before here, 
uh, they are using like some knowledge in order to train the the algorithm. That this knowledge are like based on human on human data on domain knowledge and like some neural rules. After that, they show that like with some different like uh, algorithms perspective, they can also um, um, they can learn also how to play Go, Chess, and other games without using like the domain rules. So without knowing like these rules from scratch. And one of the um, latest very cool results is AlphaDev. That oh, this is quite interesting because it's going behind like this kind of like games. And what they show DeepMind with this with this one. Okay, thank you. Uh, was that you can use like reinforcement learning to improve the uh, the the performances of certain algorithms that are some like of the algorithms most like you're using like every day when you are uh, using a computer, and they show that like uh, reinforcement learning can find like different ways to uh, improve the um, the velocity uh, and the uh, computational uh, speed of this kind of algorithms. So I think that's like these are like quite yeah like quite uh, a lot like are a lot of interesting results, but now we are going like more to what what we are doing like to to achieve this kind of results. So the outline of today will be uh, the following. So we start like with a small recap on reinforcement learning because since like you saw only like maybe most of you already know about reinforcement learning, but to be on the same page, I would like, like to give you like a very small introduction again. Then we are going to deep QM and like see the other algorithms that also we have seen before that achieve these amazing results. So TRPO, PPO, DDPG, and, and uh, software actor critic. So okay. Uh, how many of you like uh, remember everything from like yesterday's lecture? Okay. Be perfect. So there are like some people are not super certain about it some people that are that know everything so i think that's like it's important to give you again like some ideas so we reinforcement learning in general what we want to solve are these sequential decision making problems what are sequential decision making problems are problems where we are every time we are in a, like in different situation and we need to take an action these are kind of problems we are solving every day and also are prevalent in many fields of science. If you think about going from finance to healthcare, to autonomous driving and so on. So how we model this kind of problem? Okay, we have our agent, for example, imagine that we have a chess player that wants to learn how to play chess. We have our environment that you know, in this case is the uh, chess board. And we have to decide which action to take. So um, we have to, we can decide like between different actions. And every time that we are taking this action, uh, the environment answers us. We have changing the state that in this case is changing the, um, uh, the chessboard configuration and also telling us how good is this action. So giving us a reward function. The, Idea behind reinforcement learning is that if you are encoding this task using this reward function, and we find like a way to optimize the sum of this reward function, we can also learn the task. Is it more or less clear to everyone? I think so. Okay. So um, to be more a little bit more formal, what is an MDP? Uh, an MDP, we have like the state space that are different configuration, for example, of the chessboard, an action space that are different action that we can take when we are in, in a specific configuration of the chessboard, the reward function that tells us how good is the action, a discount factor that basically tells us how, how, much, how, how much are important the actions we are taking in this particular instant and how are important the one that we will take in the future. The transition model that tells us how, when we are uh, deciding a specific action, we're in a specific state, what will be like the next state. So what will be like the next configuration, for example, of the chessboard. Initial state distribution, that's in our case of the chess 
is always like this one and in horizon so the number of steps that we are that we can take to solve the task so this is an mdp and what our agent is doing is that is following a policy what is a policy basically is a, the um is the distribution of an action so you are in a state you have to decide which action to take with some probability and how to uh, to see if like a policy is good or not? Um, what we're doing is that before, like we are summing over all the reward function that we are taking, and we see and we rank these policies by these reward functions. Okay, but this uh, cumulative sum of the uh, reward function, and this is called expect return. So. Another important basic concept that you have saw also yesterday are the value functions. Uh, it's very similar to the expect return, but now we are in a specific state and we are seeing what is the expected cumulative sum of reward when we are starting from a specific, sorry, a specific state S and we are following a policy by. Then uh, we are, uh, we can see, uh, we, uh, sorry, uh, what is a, an action value function? An action value function is like an, another step, like fixing now not only the state, but we're fixing also the action. And we are looking, like as before, to the expected cumulative sum of, uh, uh, of the work function. And then what is the advantage function? The advantage function tells us how good will it be like to take another action uh, instead of the one that the policy will de de is deciding. So basically tell us how can we improve the policy? Okay, uh, when uh, a policy is optimal, when uh, is maximizing the, as, as we said before, the expected cumulative sum of the rewards, same things with the action value function. I'm trying to go like more speed, uh, like faster because this concept you saw also yesterday. But uh, it's important also to know that like when we, uh, ob obviously if the policy is, op is optimal, the advantage function is always like uh, equal to zero or negative. Um, this is because if it's not like this, obviously there will be like another action that we can take to improve like our policy. And so the policy will be not optimal. Okay, so this was like a very like fast recap or what you saw yesterday. And now we will go to the first part, new part, that is deep Q learning. So um, I think that yesterday you saw how to solve like MDPs with like very um, uh, fundamental methods that are like these exact methods that are called like very, very iteration and policy iteration. Um, these methods like requires to know like the dynamics of the model. So you have to know what is the transition model, the P that we have seen before, that tells us what will be like the next state. And also in general, it requires that at, at each iteration, we need to go all over the states and actions. But imagine, for example, that we want to solve like StarCraft and we need to go to all the possible state and actions every time. It would be like impossible, I think that. So, um, for this reason, like what we, uh, okay, I will get, give like a small recap of what is like uh, key learning and we will see then how to go like to use these like uh, larger domains. So uh, key learning. Yeah, in key learning, what we have is that we have like this uh, Bellman equation um, that you also used to yesterday. The idea of Bellman equation is how to improve basically our policy. So imagine that we are on a policy pie and we want to understand what is like the improvement that we want to have, like following this policy. What we do is that we are taking the, the action that we maximized our action value function. And the idea of like Q learning is exactly like this. So we start from our Q values that are all, all of us, all of them, sorry, are uh, equal to zero uh, or like a different initialization, this depends. Uh, yeah, this depends a lot like on how to also you have like your exploration, but then we are taking an initial state S and then we are going like until convergence, sampling in action, 
like how to sample an action depends on how our exploration strategy we will see after we will take a, a next state as prime in the case in which like s prime is terminal with like our part so what is like the idea of terminal states i hope that yesterday you saw it i don't remember exactly uh, but the idea is that like if there is the, the state is terminal basically you're finished your uh, your possibility to interact with the environment so our your target will be like only the reward function um and like here i can see that i put like in the reward function also the next state uh okay uh, i think that i will like remove this next state to be like more um precise with the other like part of the slides but uh, this is also another way to define the reward function so the reward function can depend also on the next state that we will visit by the way, we need, uh, we will sample the new state as prime. Then, in case in which like the uh, S prime is not um, is not terminal, what we're doing is that we we will like improve our Q table, um, summing the reward function with the maximum action. So, like following the Bellman equation. Then we um, update the uh, the Q table with this like updates that is like a soft update and then we store like as new initial state as prime and we are going like this like until convergence so one like important thing is how to stay like to sample the actions because if here with the, the beginning like we are greedy we cannot sample like all the actions so in general like you are like these policies that are like, how to sample actions not to take like the one that maximizes the q function but in general is the one that maximizes the q function with some probability epsilon to take all the other actions and in general like a very cool thing is that cool learning converges to optimal policies and okay one thing that i didn't say before is that stop me like with questions if there are like questions in general it's not a problem um so one problem with q learning is that uh we have to uh to explore enough so so to explore a lot uh and the learning rate needs to be how to like to um uh how to set like this alpha so the learning rate needs to be small enough, but not to decrease too quickly. So how to trade off like the learning rate is not so easy. Another problem that we have that you can see like uh, like from the um, from also from the from the algorithm is how to scale to um, higher domains. In uh, in this case, we have like this table of Q. But imagine that, for example, we have this number of states that are like some number of states of some like Atari games, or we will, we have to deal with continuous environment. So where we can like, for example, discretize the space in a small like uh, states. So in small states, but we have this number of states. Obviously, like we cannot use Q-learning as it is because it will require like forever. So, the problem is that like the basic learning keeps a table of all Q values. And so you have to store all these Q values in order like to, to solve it. And in a realistic situation, we cannot like uh, possibly learn about every single state because as I say, like there are too many states to visit. There are too, also too many states to hold in the Q tables in memory. So we have to find like a way to uh, approximate these states. In fact, our like our goal will be like to generalize to to learn like a sort of like a function that can tell us where like two states are similar. Also, like the two these two states will have like similar Q, Q, Q values, and this also will like help us to generalize to new states that we have not seen before, but are similar to the one that we have already seen. And this is like this generalization concept is something that you for sure you saw also like in other lectures on different on other fields of machine learning. So, okay, now we are going like to like what we will do. So the idea is that instead of using a table, now we will use like a parameterized key function where this uh, parameterization is given by this parameter theta. And this theta can be like this parameterization can be different. We can have like a linear function, but in general, we are using a neural network. Um, 
our learning rule will be the following. So it's the same basically as before. So we have this target that we need to update. Uh, I hope that to, like, the slides are uh, are not like to are, are a bit like lighter than expected. So I hope that everyone can see them. Um, so uh, the, as, as I say, like we have the target that is the same as we before, but now we have this queue that's parameterized by theta. And then we need to update theta and how to do it. Basically, we are doing something that is similar to a gradient stack. So because, because like the idea is that you want to minimize like the error. So you have like your Q table that is like basically the value that you have now and you want to arrive to the correct value that will be like something that is close to the one that you saw now with like the maximization of the, fun the, of the action. And so you want to reduce this basically this error and so that is like the thing that you have inside here is a mean square error, mean square error if you see. Okay. Uh, now I like I have like very few slides on neural network, but if everyone like more or less uh, like after I think this week already like knows about neural network, we can also skip them. So. How many of you like wants to see like these like very two slides on neural nets before? Perfect. Okay, we can skip them. I will like uh, they will remain in the in, in the PDF, but I think that is better to come back like since we don't have like so much time. Okay, so okay, uh, our learning rule is the one that we see before. So this is basically how our Q network will update our parameter. So how the DQ, um, okay, like following this principle was deployed like this algorithm called DQN, that is like a uh, deep Q learning network. Um, so the idea behind is the following. Okay, um, we have like the first is very small. So I can like try to explain you like a little bit like by, um, uh, by words. So the first two step we will see after what you are doing, because there are like two like uh, advances of the QN that are like the double uh, double Q and also um, prioritize experience replay. But the the idea uh, of the QN is very similar to uh, so, to um, uh, so to Q learning. So what we are doing is that we are with some probability we select a random action, otherwise we're selecting the one that's maximizing like the our um our q function. So as in X, uh, epsilon greedy, as we've seen before. Then we're executing this action and we observe the reward R. Then what we are doing is that we need now to um see what is like the new transition. So it will be like will be like the next state as as prime. And then what we're doing is that we um, update our value, that is our like parameter, that in this case uh, is this uh, uh, t, but like because this was taken by the original paper, but is exactly this like t is exactly the uh, theta that we have seen before. Uh, oh no, the theta, sorry, the theta is here. This phi is the state. I'm sorry. Uh, so we want to update this theta doing like a gradient descent. So what we are doing is that this like this is what we saw before. So this is the tar uh, we have the target minus our actual value of the Q function, and this is like the mean square error. So this is like the uh, idea uh, behind um, uh, the QN that is exactly basically the same of of Q learning with only this different update of the of the uh, of the parameters of the Q function. So some details that comes uh, after. So um, we have seen before that we have like this um, mean square error, but in general is not the best like way to. Um, uh, to train the DQN. So instead of using like this kind of loss function, in general is use the Uber loss, where basically the Uber loss like gives like less uh, less importance to when we are doing like very, very like bad steps. So 
yeah, is the same of like of mean square error when we are doing like small steps. So when like the our a is our a sorry our a is our like error. So it's the same like for the mean square error. If you can see like the first the first line, the second line is still like like is um is smaller when we are, like we are going like uh behind delta, and this is because uh, in this case. Uh, if you are doing like this, like very high uh, steps, uh, we in, our parameters will increase too much, and so we, we can have like some problems in the training part. Another thing that they use instead of doing like stochastic gradient descent is to use like an RMS prop, and this is like very important because what it's doing is that implicitly it performs some like simulated annealing. So if you suppose, for example, that we uh, are close to a minima, instead of like the, to go like very fast, what we're doing is that like it decreases the learning rate in order to not overshoot the minima. And this is doing, yeah, this is done like automatically. Uh, okay, so this was like the architecture that was proposed like in the, uh, for solving the Atari game in the original paper. So since like we have some images, we need to use also convolutional neural network, and like this kind of uh, uh, like our output of this like convolutional neural network. So the network is our like parameter uh, that we want to the parameters are the parameters that we want to optimize, and the output are the actions. So we have like expected reward for it for a specific action. So it will be like in some sense our Q table. Okay. Uh, this also like is smaller than expected, but these are a list of uh, of Atari games, and okay, uh, what is shown is that like this is like the um, comparison between like the Likuna agent with the best like reinforcement learning method that was proposed before, um, and the performances of the Likuna are normalized. With respect to a professional human games player, so when it achieves like more than fifty percent, basically you can say that your 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 algorithm is better than the human. So from this point, more or less, for all these games, like yeah, the can like was better than like the uh, that this human player, and this was like an incredible results. Okay, so coming back now to our like algorithm. If you remember here, maybe no, because like I was a bit faster. Uh, okay, what's happening? Okay, so the first line, the second line, okay. You, you can see that there are like this, not very well because <laughs> it's very light, but there are two different parameters. One parameter is, is theta minus, another one is theta. So we have two different parameters that we want to optimize. Why we are, why like the, Adds this thing because in our problem that we saw before, we have like one one problem that is called upward bias. So we want to optimize our theta using like the same theta that we have before, but like when we are doing this maximization, we are using like this theta. So if there is some bias, we are like accumulating it. So the idea here is to use like two different um, uh, weights. One for the uh, for selecting the best action, and another one for evaluating the best action. Uh, so it's exactly what we have seen before, but the difference is here is that when we are sorry, uh, okay, then when um, when we are evaluating the action, we are using theta and select like for the sorry uh, this like. Theta n, uh, theta minus, and when we are instead um, using like, the parameter instead we are using like at, the, at this step is theta k. So this is like the theta k that we are using for selecting the best action, and theta minus is the one that we are using that here there is a minus to um, to evaluate to evaluate the action. So to find like the maximum over these q values. After that, another important thing that also like is like at the beginning of our algorithm here is the uh -huh -huh. okay, it's the first line, so it's not so important. Uh, is then this line it's say initialize replay memory. So 
the idea is that we want to use like more data, so data that we have also like we have seen before. So um, instead of replaying all the transition that we have seen like before, so like to update our Q values uh, with equal probability, we want to take the ones that like in which we are like uh, worse. So the one that basically uh, we have like more error. So this is like the error that we have like at this stage of the of the problem, and we are taking like the transition at each step, the one that um, that gives us like more uh, more error. So the one in which we want to improve. Okay, uh, and like okay, it's not it would be like more clear when you will see like the PDF, but these are like some uh, some results. On, uh, on on using like the prioritized experience replay instead of using like the stand, the uh, the standard EQN without experience replay. Okay, so uh, now we are going to the like to the next part, that is like okay, and there is not so much time, so okay, uh, that is like trust region policy optimization. Um, yesterday, uh, have you seen yesterday also? Uh, policy gradient algorithms. I think so, if I remember correctly from the slides. Okay, yes, no. Okay, more or less. Okay, so coming back to our chess player. So as we say that our agent is a policy at the end. And so like in policy optimization, what we are doing is that our policy is parameterized by a parameter called theta. So we install like a funding like the poly the, like this like policy that's like doesn't tell us so much. We are finding like the parameter theta that gives us like the uh the policy. So this param this policy can be everything, can be for example also like a neural network. And we want to find to find like the parameters that maximize this expected cumulative sum of rewards. So always the same objective. So I think yesterday, I, I took this from the slides of yesterday. So I hope that you arrived to this point during the lecture because it was very long yesterday also. Um, so this is like a, a, a famous like policy gradient algorithm where the idea is that at each step, you're updating this parameter theta. I'm sorry also that I'm always like on this side and never on the other one, but okay. Um, we are updating this parameter theta by gradient descent on what this is our this is our expected return. So we are doing like gradient descent on this objective. And at the end we are we return the parameter theta. Uh, okay. So what we want to improve now is our uh, step size. So what we will change is how to choose in some sense this step size. Why is it, why is it so important? Because if like we are doing like always like this, always true in every like uh, machine learning optimization problem, if you're doing, you're doing like a, a step that is too far, uh, we are overshooting maybe the optimum. If you're like, it's too small, we will never converge. So we want to find something that is in between. Be in between. So we want to be like faster as uh, as we can, but without being like too fast. But the reinforcement learning is also like more important this part, because if your step is too far, we have like a very terrible policy. And in this case, what we what will be like the the um, uh, what will be like the uh, the thing that happen is that we will collect some samples from this very terrible of our policy that can like gives us no information at all. And also maybe we can like be stuck in this very terrible policy without like uh, can uh, escape from it. So. Um, as I say, like this is like uh, this is that what we see before. So what is like the idea? Um, one idea could be like to use like line search to find like what is like the uh, the biggest uh, the biggest step that we can take without like being like too too big. So without like going to a very like say like to a terrible policy that gives us like terrible results. But the the problem is that like doing line search is very expensive. So uh, the idea that we will see now are these trust region methods. 
that's we work like uh, as we will see like the, in the next slides. But before I will come back a little bit like to um, our policy gradient algorithm. So uh, what we want to do is uh, say like we want to optimize the expected return. So that is what we also see at the beginning. And um, how to do it is that we are using the policy gradient theorem in order to uh, uh, to recover the uh, the gradient of the expected return. I think that you saw, uh, you saw yesterday the policy gradient theorem, so I will not go through them, but are very like simple like calculation of how to um, how to um, achieve like this kind of formula from like doing the gradient of the expected reward. Uh, okay, this is our okay. Uh, it's not like you cannot see from here, but there is a hat on this Q. So this is our estimation on this deduction function. It's not uh, it's not the perfect one because we are estimating it by samples. So the first thing that we need to do is that we want to, since like we are estimating by samples, we want to reduce like the variance of these samples. So what, one thing that we can do is that use the value function as baseline to reduce this. Uh, um, to reduce these um, uh, variance and this bias, and so what we do is that we can like uh, we can subtract the value function, and now we will achieve so this new gradient where we have like the advantage function. So our final formulation will be this one, where we have like the, the gradient is equal to the gradient with respect to the log of the policy, uh, and uh, multiplied by the, the estimated advantage function. Okay, this is only a recap because you already saw like this kind of formulas yesterday. So this is our like oh, now our gradient, and what like policy gradient algorithms doing in general is that they are like um, going using like uh, uh, gradient descent or gradient descent because they are maximizing in this case um, the um, uh, the gradient we have seen before of the expected return, and we are updating the theta in this way. Now, what will be like the problem? Okay, imagine that for example, like this, we are super lucky. And this is like this very nice uh, way in which we can like represent our expected return. So these are the different parameters of the policy. So these are the theta. And this is our expected return. So for each parameter of theta, we have like a different values of our expected return. And what we want to do is that we want to achieve like the, um, the optimal one. So we are want to arrive here exactly. So imagine that, for example, we have like this point. Then what we want to do is that we want to take like this step that takes us from here to this point. The problem now is that we don't have like the exact expected return, but we are estimating it from samples. So, so we have some errors. And like the other problem is that we know we can like estimate how it is like the oh, sorry, this expected return like quite in a quite good way when we are close to the parameter that like samples the uh the actions or the trajectories. But when we are going so, like more uh far away from this value, our error increase so our estimation becomes like less less uh, correct and so the problem would be like that now if you want to take like a, a step that increase our um our theta so our expected our estimated expected return we maybe we can take we will take like this kind of step that will lead us to to this point that is not optimal at all because we are having like a parameter theta that gives us also worse results than the one that we have like in the step before. So the idea behind like trust region is that you want you you want to uh, improve your parameter, but only in like in a part of the parameter that are close by to the one that you're already like using to sample the trajectories. So this is our like actual policy from which we are sampling the data and we want to find like the other part we want to like improve this parameter by increasing it like only like being like constrained to be like inside these kind of parameters uh okay so uh this is exactly what is the objective uh, function of uh, uh the trpo so what we have like uh on the 
on the up part. This is like very similar to what we have seen before. So this is in some sense the expected return. Like here we have like this this thing that is like called important sampling, but uh, that is the idea is that you are basically resample your uh, your data that uh, depending on the data that you have seen, like this is to reduce the bias. But but the idea is more that you want to find a policy that improve basically the advantage function. So something that improve your actor policy. But you want also to be close to the, to the old one. So you want to also to satisfy this constraint that tells you that you cannot like go to, you, know, you cannot like um, uh, take a parameters that is too different from the policy that we are sampling now. Where these two different is like concept is given by the um, uh, Kullback library divergence between the two policy. The one that we are using now, that is like the theta k, and the one that we were that we are now like, we're now using like two for the next step. So that is theta. Okay. Uh, are there some questions until now? No, I hope that there is no because like, oh, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, sorry, it's just that I'm trying to understand it and, it, and it, it's a bit small, so it's hard to, but uh, I, I was very, no, 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 it's not your fault, of course. Uh, um, I was trying to understand, so in a, a few slides, uh, before uh, you were explaining how uh, it was a good idea to diminish both bias and variance to add the value function in the uh, in the loss when we were taking the gradient, it was a good idea to add the value function in the in the gradient set. But so I was trying to understand the logic on how does that decrease the bias and the variance. Thank you. Okay, the idea is that imagine that, for example, like you're taking like only one uh, one action for these Q values. So you have only one sample. So you are super biased because you only see one sample. But instead, like if you're uh, removing like the value function, it is not clear. Yeah. Uh, it would be like, but uh, okay, if you are using also like the other the samples before that, it, okay, it depends. Like okay, uh, oh, it, I was to, biased a priori. To, yeah, it is okay. it is to reduce like the variance, like not the bias. Ah, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, but we we can also like discuss later maybe if you thank want. Thank you very much. Um, other. Okay, so. Okay, I was trying to under to, to see if there are. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so now some experiments. So this is like how. <laughs> um, okay, how TRPO uh, on some Mujaco environments. So for example, like you can see that at the beginning, this has to uh, learn how to um, how to work out to run. So is like getting better and better uh at some point it will like start also to run like properly i hope hmm. and this you can see like this is like the uh, uh natural policy gradient that you have seen yesterday and maybe i can okay this was like the uh, policy gradient you've seen yesterday and the other one like was uh, and this also with cross entropy so it was like another method that was proposed before at as you saw maybe like for a very few seconds but you can see like maybe again i will uh, give you the reference on the on the video also uh, you can see that like they are not learning how to run instead like using uh, uh, trpo it learns how to run so this was like one interesting like result. Now we are going to one of the most used algorithm like now for uh, like until now that is the this PPO, uh, proximal policy optimization. So what is a problem with like this formulation of TRPO problem? Like it is more like um, 
yeah uh, a problem when when you want when you want to um implement this kind of pro this kind of optimization problem want to solve it the problem is that you have to solve like this uh constraint problem that in general is not so, it's not so easy to optimize this kind of like of uh, constraint problems because this was like one of the uh, difficulty on uh, optimizing trpo so the idea of ppo is that like it has the same like concept trpo so we want to be like in some way close to the like to the policy that we have seen before but instead like of um instead of optimizing like we instead of having this constraint uh the first like uh ppo uh variant as you say uh, called ppo penalty what is done is that like instead of like using this constraint objective it it puts the constraint inside the inside the main objective so we have this kl divergence so we want to be close inside the main objective instead of, instead of having like a s constraint then we have like another variance that is called PPO clip that there's no like KL divergence at all, but we will see like how it works like now in the next slides. So um also okay nine. Okay. Uh perfect. Uh, so um, P, uh, PPO penalty works as as uh, as uh, as I said basically before. So uh, if you can see, uh remember what is like our objective of TRPO. Our objective therapy was this one. And basically this one is very similar to what? To the our constraints that we have before. But now what we are solving is all this only this un, like uh this optimization problem without any constraints. So this like it's easier to be optimized, uh is not exactly like correct as correct and like it's not doing exactly what trpo is doing but for sure like it's very easier to optimize this kind of objective instead of the one of trpo then we are going like to something that is also simpler because now instead like of having this uh, kl what we have is that we have like this optimization problem where we have like this first part that is our like uh, policy optimization objective. So we want to find like a, a theta that maximize like advantage function. So that tell us how to improve our actual policy theta k. Uh, okay, but we want also like to not go too far from it. So what we are doing is that we are clipping when we are our um, where our error, basically our error policy is going too far from the old one. This like incentive to take like the policies that are close by without like calculating the KL divergence. So it's also like easier than the other one. So also easier to be like implemented and optimized. So some results, uh, now you cannot see anything, I'm sorry, but from this, yes. Some results on, uh, on using like, uh, PPO was like the solving like the for example the Ruby cube. So you can see uh some, some, or in, in a few seconds, but like at the beginning it was not so like so clear how to, to the robot how to perform like these gestures and how to solve it, like how to uh, turn the cube. Now uh in a few seconds, if I remember correctly, yes. Now is improving and is learning how to do it, and so and so on and so on. Like you can see, like the full video, like at the uh, in the YouTube video that I linked in the slides. Okay, so this is like everything about like the trust region likes approaches. Now we will go to a different kind of, of algorithms called deep deterministic policy gradient. So the idea of deep deterministic policy gradient is quite similar to like to Q learning in some sense. So what we have is that we are okay. Uh, again, this is our Bellman equation. So how to find the optimal Q function using like Q learning, if you remember like some slides before. Now, uh, the first point is, as we have seen, as we have done before, is to find like an approximator of this Q function. So what we suppose is that we have like 
uh, neural network with parameter theta that can approximate this Q table. And we have uh, like uh, collected already like a set of D of trajectories. So we have um, interacted with the environment and we have a set of trajectories. And what we want to do is that we want to update our theta as we have seen before using like satisfying like this Bellman equation. So it's exactly what we have seen before. So we want to like update this theta. What we are doing is that we have like here, we have like our sampling, our trajectories from the data that we have, that we have like um, collected. And our new theta will be like something that is like, um, that try to minimize the error between the uh, maximum value that we can take. So our update of the Bellman equation and our actual Q values. So we want like a Q values, a parameter theta that is close by to our optimal action value function, to so our Bellman update. Okay, uh, there are two tricks that were used. The first one we have seen before, so we'll go like a little bit like faster. So the first one is experience replay. So as we seen before, we said before, we want to use like the previous data, but using them like in a, in a, uh, like in a smart way. So giving more importance to the one that where we have like more error. And then like the other thing also we have seen before, so we have our target network. So as like in BQN, what we have is that like we want to, this is our target. So what we want to achieve and our update will be always like something like between like having like this target and the previous uh, parameter. And this like kind of the update, maybe you have seen also like in other um, courses in this week, is called polyac averaging. So now uh, the problem here is that we want to maximize this thing, but imagine that our action are, for example, continuous, how do we can like uh, evaluate this maximum? We as we have seen also for uh, deep QN, uh, we have like now a new like parameter Q that tell us how to maximize this value that is like called theta target. This is exactly the theta minus and theta that we have seen before. Um, and we optimize this value also using like the uh, poly averaging. How to do it like is uh, very similar to like what expected, but it is exactly what we had seen before, uh, the final cost function, where we have like now we have that uh, our Q target, this is like to maximize basically to Im improve, like this is like how to evaluate our max over Q. That is like this point. And this is like to evaluate like our, uh, what is like this action that we are taking. That is like this, our, this in some sense, our policy, this one. So it's a deterministic way to like, to find like, what is the next action? Okay. So now how we can find like a policy from these like values, uh, remember, Continues and we assume that like the Q function is differentiable. So what we want to do is that we 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 can like also perform again like uh, gradient descent, but now on a different like set of parameter phi. That like depends like now on only on this parameter. So only to say that here these parameters are not the correct one, but the one that we will use are the different ones to avoid like to have like some bias between the like, two parameters we want to optimize and these are the parameter of our policy that tell us how which action to take a specific state s so um the problem is that as you can see here the final policy will be like deterministic so as we have seen also like in q learning in general if we're using like a deterministic policy to samples to sample, sorry, at the beginning is not like the best way to do because you will uh, take always like the same actions. So we are not exploring enough. So what they're doing is very similar to epsilon greedy. So we have add some noise to explore better. So it's always like the same concept that's like continues to basically to, to, come, to come back to in, uh, in these algorithms. And these are our, so these are the only differences like that 
we have to use. And in general, like what is was shown is that one of the best like um, noise to use is the mean zero Gaussian noise. So this is also like some results on uh, on some Mujoku environments. So this is when it's untrained. It's not super. I hope that you can see it. Uh, I can see it very well from a laptop, but from there not so clear. So this is when it's untrained. Then after using deterministic deep policy gradient, okay, it learns how to how to work. Mm -hmm. Here also when it's untrained, it's doing like random things, and then it learns how to how to run, how to jump also. Okay. So now we are going, okay, we are perfect on time. I'm surprised. Um, we are going to the final like algorithm they want to talk about that is a soft doctor critic. This was also one of the uh, later, uh, the last one also like in terms of time that we are seeing before, that we've seen, we've seen today, sorry. Um, so, okay. Uh, I think that I'm not sure that yesterday you saw also this kind of objective. I think no, if I remember from the from the slides, but the, uh, that I saw. But since we have time, we can also spend some words about it. So, okay, what we uh, what we say like before is that sometimes one like one problem can be that we are not exploring enough if we are taking like an optimal policy uh, deterministic policy. So. Basically, the idea is that, like in general, like you saw yesterday, that like there is always exists an deterministic policy that's the optimal one for our for our task, but in some cases, it's not the best like to to use. So, what we are doing here is that we want to find like a policy that is like the maximize the expected return, but also that is like not too deterministic. So, basically, that gives like a little bit of probability also to other actions, and this is like what is like this part that is called entropy. So what is the meaning is that we want to policy that is like I say, like not deterministic. So, um, uh, okay. So with the first, the one algorithm that's like, um, that we can see, we can start by is this soft policy iteration. So yesterday you saw policy iteration or the normal one. Now we will see like soft policy iteration is exactly the same of, soft, of policy iteration, but now our objective is changed because now we have also this entropy term here. And so what we are doing is that we started by fixing a policy and, now, and after that we apply the Bellman uh, operator. So we want to like to uh, optimize like this one taking, sorry, I forgot a max. Uh, okay, uh, okay. This will be, uh, needs to be also uh, some max somewhere, uh, some here, I will change it. So the idea is that now we are applying the, um, the Bellman operator. Then what we are doing is that like exactly as in policy in, in policy iteration, we are before we are we are applying the uh, uh, Bellman operator to the Q function, and after that we have we are update the policy. Here the update of the policy is a bit different because we we want a policy that also uh, satisfy that also optimize this other part, so also this entropy term. So. The final objective will be like this one. So we want like a, a policy pi prime that is like our new policy pi. That uh, also like is a bit close to our old old policy, and also um, that gives us also like a little bit like of entropy. And we will repeat the, this like process until convergence. So this is like very similar to the policy iteration algorithm that we have seen yes you saw yesterday, but the problem with this is that like in a uh, large continuous domain, um, requires us to like to to not we cannot like do this thing for each state and action pairs, but we need to have like as before an approximation, 
So as we as before, like also like we have like this partition function that is like this part that is like not not easy to um, to be computed when you have like many actions. And as I say, like we cannot iterate over all state action pairs. So we need an approximation as before. So as before, what we're doing is that we are parameterizing our Q values by parameter theta and our policy by parameter phi, exactly what we have seen like with DDPG. And both we can model them as neural network. Then what we are doing is that like, so we are, we perform like this what's called soft actor critic that is in the spirit very similar to soft policy iteration. So we start by optimizing like the um, the Q function, finding like a parameter, new parameter theta for, for our Q value. So how we are doing is that as before, we want to find a parameter theta that is close by to our um, our residual, that is our like target in some sense, this part, if you remember from like the other slides. Then what we're doing um, is that, okay, important uh, important thing to do that here is not clear from these slides, but this we have like a hat because the value function as before, as for the target is exactly the same thing. This is like the theta target that we have seen before. Uh, that has like this different from the theta that we are using here. So we have need to different update of this theta and this theta target because otherwise we have like, we are yeah, putting more bias inside our optimization problem. Then we take like one uh, step of gradient descent in order to optimize our policy, so our fee. So here is exactly how to like the same thing that we are doing in soft policy iteration, but now we have the, this approximation of the policy using like the parameter fee. And then we execute like this like repeatedly in the environment, we're taking a new action and we continue like to update like the uh, our Q values and our policy in this way uh, until like until that we are stopping or convergence is not always converging, obviously. So these are some experiments, maybe like the, it's not super clear from here. So I will go directly to this one. Okay. Uh, they perform like these like uh, very cool experiments on a robot on different like environments. So you can see like that the robot learns how to how to work also when like the um, floor is not exactly perfect, but there are like some uh, um, also some like uh, object in front of him. Also, he has to like do some stairs. Uh, there is Jenga here, I think. Uh, okay, so very cool. So okay, uh, I will go to the final slide. That is like thank you. <laughs> Uh, and I will hire in the next year some PhD students. So if you are interested, I will post like uh, uh, the job, uh, uh, the jobs on my website. So please like uh, follow like the updates on it. <laughs>